You and your fellow travelers have embarked on the adventure of a lifetime. You are traveling through time, attempting to be at the right place at the right time in history to witness different biblical events. After embarking on your adventure, the time machine has started having problems. Addressing the time machine issues will slow you down, but failure to deal with the mechanical problems will bring your adventure to a rapid end. You must maintain a delicate balance between witnessing your events and using your resources to repair the time machine. You are in this together. If your entire group manages to witness all their assigned events before the time runs out, you win. You will need teamwork and skill to win. Are you up to the task? Welcome, this is Ken from BibleBoardGames.com and we are looking at the cooperative version of Portals and Profits. So this is different than the uh, default game that comes out of the box, which is more of a competitive version with victory points. So if you prefer to play as team members all together in it to win or lose, uh, you might want to try out this version. So what I try to do is I want to um, try to simplify the process for you so that you don't have to read the manual and spend an entire evening or two trying to learn how to play some games. Uh, Portals and Profits is not that complicated, so it wouldn't take a couple of evenings, but might take you a little while. So let's just do this together. Go, go ahead and open up your box and get all your materials out. Um, in this version, we're going to go through just a two-player game, and I'm going to have player one in front of me to my left and player two over here to my right. I've got two colors picked out already, white and red. In this version of the game, uh, each player is going to use two uh, pawns on the board. So if you're familiar with the original version of Portals and Profits, Mm, try to forget all those rules for a moment. Mm, some of them apply here, but a lot of them don't. So don't try to think that this is going to be mostly the same. And um, so just kind of start over and let's get into your box. Okay, so starting out with your Genesis cards, the brown ones with a G, you're going to give each player, you're going to shuffle your cards and then give each player one card. And then your draw a pile you can either put on the side of the board or if you have a tight space like I have here or you have four players and you don't have room you can just put it on the board so I'm gonna put these right here on the board over the Dead Sea okay next we're gonna get to our Old Testament cards so Old Testament you're gonna give five to each player And you can like alternate if you like. So I should have done it like two, three, four, five, five. Okay. We'll get back to this one in a minute. So let's keep this pile here. Okay, New Testament, you're going to give two to each player, like so. And then the New Testament cards, you're going to place in front over here. Okay, each player is going to get one portal card. And the portal card is similar to the original game in that you, for one action, you can play that card once per game. And then you can move your pawn to any location on the board. So very powerful, but you can only do it once per game. All right, so all the cards you see in front of you, so remember, so this half of the board over is player one, this half is player two. So all the cards in front of you, you need to play. Those are your must-see locations um, before the game ends. You have to see all these locations or you lose, okay? 
and same with player two. They have to see all of their locations. So as a team, you have to see all the locations before the, your time runs out. All right, now, in addition to the cards that are in front of you, you're going to have seven cards holding in your hand. Okay, I'm just gonna deal them face down for the moment. Okay, and then we'll put the extra Old Testament cards here in the middle. Okay, and we'll get this in over here in a minute. So these cards that are in your hand are Old Testament cards. They are considered the cards that are going to repair your time machine as you're traveling. It's breaking down. You have to keep repairing it. Okay. And so before we look at those, let's finish up the setup of the board here. Um, this row here are called your risk cards. Um, you can almost think of that as a damage indicator on your time machine. So if it starts here, as it goes up, there's more damage to your time machine. And when it reaches the top here and it overflows, you actually have significant damage and then the time will speed up in your game and you don't want the time to speed up in your game because you need to play all these cards before the time runs out okay all right so you have a couple of different things we need to put on the board here one is the century marker so every time you go through all the players for an entire round you're going to move this one century ahead Okay, it starts at G, which is the Genesis time period. And then it goes from the 15th century all the way down to the 5th century, and then it does the New Testament. And then in this version of the game, once the century marker passes the New Testament, that's the end of the game. So if you have not played all your must-see cards in front of you, by the time this marker goes past the New Testament, your game is over and you lose. It's like you got sent back to your time period and you'd have to try again another day. Okay, so in addition to your century marker here, you have a fuel gauge, a fuel marker. We're just going to put that on low here and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so you're, you have a time machine and in addition to going through time, you can also travel around pretty quickly through these portals. There's three of them. You can put them anywhere on the board, but we're going to start out with the default. So we're going to put one on Beersheba, one in Shiloh, and one on Sea of Galilee. Okay. What we also have is we have our player pawns. Now, what's different than the original game, you're not doing any scoring around the board, but you're going to have two pawns for each player that are on the board. And to place them, you're just going to draw Old Testament cards. So one is going to be on Jericho here. Next one, region card, doesn't matter. Okay, Ashdod is here. And that, that was player one. Now we'll do player two, Mount Gilboa. And Bethlehem, right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is, um, since we have limited space, I'm going to use this area over here for discarding. So, for example, Genesis could fit there. Old Testament cards could fit there, and then New Testament cards could fit there. All right. Okay, so now we have all our player pawns on the board. We have our teleporters on the board. We have our fuel and our century marker. Okay, so if you're not familiar with, if you've never played this before, let's go through some of the basics here. So every time you have a round of all the players, this marker gets moved up a century. 
And one of the basic premises of this game in the cooperative version and the regular version is that you have to be in the right place at the right time. Okay, so if we look at one of our cards here, Hebron, and it has a G for Genesis, that means we have to be in Hebron, but we also have to be there in the Genesis time period. So if this was in the 13th century, for example, and we were on Hebron, then we could not play this card because it says G on it. We would have to be in a Genesis time period. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more difficult or strategic. You have to plan ahead and get to certain places at the right time. Like we say, you have to be in the right place at the right time. Okay, so it is very difficult to uh, get in an exact place at the right time, at the exact time. Um, so one of the things that is a really cool mechanism in the game is you have this additional fuel boost. Okay, and on some of your cards, you'll notice they have red marks on them that look like oil drops with red around them. Some cards don't have any, some have two, and some have one. Okay, so you can actually sacrifice a card. Actually, you can only sacrifice cards from in your hand. These are all must-see locations. You cannot discard them. But in your hand, you'll have seven cards every turn. And if you see any that have fuel on them, like this one has two, you could turn in this card and move up this fuel by two. Okay. So what does that do for you? When you move this fuel gauge up here, it allows you to then expand the time frame. So in this case, by two centuries. So you, if you have a card, let's put it here in the 14th century. So um, if you had this card, Hebron, that needs to be played in the Genesis time period, and your fuel is up on two, that means you can play a card that's anywhere two centuries before or after. So anywhere from Genesis, 15th century, 14th, 13th, or 12th. So you get two centuries on either side. If it moved up to three, you would then have three centuries. And we'll get to full in a second here. So if your fuel is on one, two, or three, then it remains there for all players and it continues to stay on that number. Okay, so at some points in the game, you may want to consider that as part of your strategy to keep it there. All right. Um, now, if you have something that's just really far out of your range, let's say I have a car and I want to play it in the 8th century and there's just no way I can get there from using this fuel gauge where it is. I'm in the 14th century. There's no way with a 1, 2, or 3 fuel boost that I can get play a car in the 8th century. I can turn in some more fuel and move it up to full. So if it's full, now I'm not restricted to any time. I can play any card, any time period, as long as I'm in the right location. So instead of having to be in the right place at the right time, you would just have to be in the right place. So that makes it a little bit easier if your fuel is on full. So because it's so powerful, it uses up some energy in your time machine. And once you use it, that player who used it only gets that ability. Once their turn is over, it goes back to low. And then you can start again. So... If it's on just a short summer here, if it's on one, two, or three, it will stay there as each player goes along. Once you get to full, just that one player gets that advantage and then it resets back to low. So that's a really good way to expand your ability to play cards at different times. All right. So for the remainder of the game, I'm going to turn these over. These Just remember, these are the cards in your hand. But I'm going to show them as we play. They're just going to be here. 
like so. Same with these here. And just remember, this is player one on my left, player two on this side of the board. Player one is white, player two is red. Okay, so um, to start our game here, we have to put one card from the Old Testament into the risk or damage cards. They're called risk cards because it adds risk. Um, we don't want this to overflow past this card here because then it causes more damage and it moves this marker up quick, very quick if you don't keep an eye on that. As I found out in our first game trial, we got beat really quickly because we didn't know what that was and those cards really do add up. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Okay, now as those cards get added here, we'll explain how they get added there in a moment. Um, you can remove some from there if you are in, again, in the right place at the right time. So for example, this one says Shiloh, 11th century. If we were in Shiloh in the 11th century, that means we can then pick up that failed part from the time machine that was left in the at, that, at Shiloh in the 11th century, we can pick it up, repair our time machine, and remove this card from the risk pile and discard it here. So it's good to repair your time machine and get cards off of this row whenever possible. Um, and that's one way to do it, is if you're in the right place at the right time, just remove the card from that row. Okay, the other way in which you can help your time machine is with some points. And this is um, repairing your time machine with these, with these cards here. So that one just really reduces damage. This is actually repairing. Um, so to repair, to take a card out of this, out of your hand here, you would again have to be in the right place at the right time. So I have one here in the 15th century, for example. Makeda. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing all these correctly, so forgive me if I miss any, but let's say we need to get to Makeda at the 15th century, which is pretty close to Genesis. So if someone was to use one fuel and get us to there we could use it this turn or we could wait till next turn when it's in the 15th century i should say next round because each player has a turn but next round is when it moves up okay um so let's just say we did have i'm just going to hypothetical here if we had the fuel boost on one and we were at this location player one, okay? We could play this card then and use one of our actions. We get four actions per turn. So if we were to use that as one of our actions, we would place it down here and we would get five points for that round, okay? And when all of our turns are up when every player has gone and the round is completed we will add up all of our points together and that's going to be pretty important because um, there is a guide or a chart here that you do need to have on hand or print out or look up um, ahead of time and so this chart here adjust how many cards will be in the risk row. So really it's assessing how much repair you did. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain how to read this chart because it takes a little while. So really you're gonna look at the bottom here of how many players you have in the game. So in this demo game I'm doing here, we just have two players. So for two players, we're just gonna look at this one column and only this one column for this entire game. We are gonna ignore these other player games. So we're going to look at this 
and we're also going to look at this. So let's say I played five points this round and nobody else did. I look on my chart here for two players and it says if I have less than six points played in this round, it's going to add two cards to the risk. So add one, two. And that's not good. We don't want cards added to that row. So five points is not really good enough for one whole round. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind as together. You want to get more points here so those cards don't build up. And it shows you that, you know, if you had six or more points, nothing happens. You don't add cards or don't subtract cards. If I had more than 11 points, now we start removing cards. So if I had 12 or more points, we would remove two cards. If I had 18 points or more, we would uh, remove four cards. That's really good. And it is possible to get more than 20, 24 or more points. And if you do that, you would remove all the cards in that row. So that's extremely powerful if you can do that collectively as a team. Okay, so you're going to need this chart handy each round. So if you haven't had a chance, print that off of our website or Portals and Profits website. Um, it would be in the cooperative version of the game. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put this back in my hand. And what I like to do with my cards is I like to order them by century so I can kind of tell what's going on and make some mm, good strategic decisions or at least start to. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes to do that here. You can do that on your side and then I'll come back to the video in a second. All right, so now I'm just going to go through the different um, options you have when you play. And if you're not sure, you can look at the instructions here because um, as I'm doing myself. Um, so really, it, it does give you six different options that you can do. Okay, so like the original game, you have four actions that you can perform on your turn. And you can do a, a variety of them. So the basic, most basic one is that you can move. So moving from one location to another along these trails would be one. Like I can't go from Mount Gilboa to Sebaste in one move because there's no path there. I would have to go one and then two. Okay, so that would cost one action to move every time. Or you can, if you're in the right place at the right time and you play one of your must-see cards and discard it, that counts as one action. Or if you are repairing the time machine out of the cards in your hand, you would put one down. That would also be one action. Or if you're removing a card from the risk area, the risk gauge, I call it. Um, if you remove one card from there, that's also one action. Okay, so to simplify it into three possible things you want to look for is you either want to repair your time machine, play one of your must-see actions, one must-see locations, or remove a card from your risk area. You kind of have to pay attention to all three of those. Otherwise, this time period will start going too quickly and you won't be able to see everything before it runs out. Okay, so those are your three main things. And then to accomplish those three main things, you will be moving around on the board and you will be probably using up fuel on some of your cards in your hand when you need to move the fuel gauge up to expand your time period.
so that you can play certain cards. In this version of the game, you can discard as much fuel as you want on a given turn. You're not restricted to any limit. Another thing you can do is if you don't like certain cards in your hand, whether you don't like one card or you don't like many cards, I could say, I don't like these three cards. I could discard them all as one action and I could pick up three more. Okay, another thing that you can do which doesn't happen often but it could happen is that you can trade must-see locations with other players okay so let's say for example we were both together now in this version of the game you can both be on the same city at the same time in the original version competitive version you can't you actually block each other in some situations but here you can be on the same location and it actually can be a strategic plan it's like you're getting together and you're planning Ooh. you can't do that with other cards but just with the must-see locations okay I did mention this but you do have multiple pawns on the board and you have four total actions so you can move one pawn one and another pawn one, two, so that would count as three. Okay, another point good to know is that when you play a must-see location, that card is discarded from the game into the discard pile. It does not count as your time machine repair points. Only the cards that you're holding in your hand, when you play those, those points at the bottom of the card get added up in the entire round with other players. Those count towards your repair points for the round. Every turn that you start, you are going to have seven cards in your hand. So right now I have six. So beginning of my turn, I would add one for seven. If you happen to run out of cards from here, Then you would just reshuffle them. Do much better than I'm doing here. <laughs> um, and then you would place them back and draw again. And then discard as usual. Okay, so I did want to show you what happens um, just so you get to see. Um, let's say we have the damage. Of your time machine was at here. Oh, let me put this back on here for a second. Okay, so your time machine is at its full capacity of damage. That means the next card that gets drawn will impact your time here, which is not good in this game. Um, so you start drawing cards let's say it call let's say player one did not remove any cards from here and it's the end of the turn the rule says you have to replace two cards so you start replacing cards now the first card i drew let's say it's one of these um kind of bonus cards if you draw one of those they just go into the discard pile and doesn't count as anything that's good for you okay so you draw another one okay Okay, so here's uh, just another place and location. So it cannot fit here anymore. There's no room. It actually will then go into the discard pile and the time period marker moves up a century. Okay, so let's say you're in the um, sixth century here and player two has completed all of their must-see actions and you have one left. And it says Jerusalem in the 
New Testament era. All right. And we're white. Fuel gauge is on two. It's in the sixth century. We're two, two marks away. Even though it's centuries, we're two marks away from the New Testament here. Um, we are going to... This would be kind of the end game winning situation here. So it costs us one, two actions to move to Jerusalem. We've got the fuel boost here at two, which one, two away from New Testament. So it's within our range. And then we play our third action, Jerusalem. And as a team, we win the game. Because we completed all of our must-see actions. That's the goal of the game. You got to finish all of your actions, all of your must-see locations before this time goes past the New Testament. And that's how you would do it. Now, I didn't show you all the moves in between because that's really up to you to figure out the strategy of how best to do that. So, good luck. God bless. And we will... See you next time. Have fun.